It's a big, noisy universe of stocks out there. Welcome to Goodbye or Goodbye, our goal to help cut through that noise to navigate the best moves for your portfolio. Today, we're taking a look at two major American machine makers. Joining me here with how to play these cyclical stocks is Al Root, Barron's senior writer. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Julie. So let's get to your buy stock, first of all. And it is Deer, the farm equipment giant. Of course, when you're talking about Deer, a lot of what you talk about has to do with the farming cycle, right? And the income that farmers are bringing in and how much they're willing to spend. So where are we in that cycle? You think close to a bottom, maybe. Well, you hit on it. These are two cyclical companies. And at this point, uh, farmers are not doing as well as they were. Corn prices are down about 30 to 5 to 40 percent year over year. Farm income is projected in 24 by our great USDA to be about 115 billion. That's down from two years ago mm. from a peak of about 185 billion. So that means less spending on farm equipment and things like that. But when you're getting close to a trough, that of course is a good thing for cyclical stocks. One of the interesting things that's been happening in farming too is a lot of technology being right. brought into the industry with what's called precision farming. How is deer sort of benefiting from that? So this is things like self-driving tractors, uh, computers planting seeds at a perfect depth, uh, better, more targeted applications of pesticides and fertilizers so you use less. That's a cost saving, it's a better for the environment. If you remember uh, CNH, uh, Deer Peer bought Raven. Agco just did a joint venture with Trimble. This is sort of a big deal with the industry. This is about partly about selling recurring revenue, subscriptions for these types of services. Deer eventually wants this to represent about 10% of their sales. It's probably about 1% of their sales now. So that secular trend is just starting and will carry on sort of you know, higher highs and higher lows throughout the various ag cycles that'll happen between you know, now and 2030. And by the way, those self-driving tractors and such tend to be a lot more expensive. So yeah, it, that's, that's exactly right. It's all a price the bump yeah. on the original equipment. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. Um, then let's talk about valuation here. Deer versus its historical valuation. How's it stacking up? So cyclical 101. I am a great lover of cyclical stocks and industrials. You know, you typically trade at a low valuation of peak earnings, high valuation of trough earnings. That's just the way things go. Right now, Deer is trading at about 13 times. 2024 calendar year or fiscal year, depending on how you want to look at it. That's actually, and earnings are expected to be down. So you're getting sort of a low multiple below average on lower earnings, which is a pretty good setup for the stock. Hmm, interesting. Okay. We always like to talk about what could be the um, downside risk in yep. a situation like this. And in this case, it could be that we don't see a rebound in farm income, right? So uh, farming, it's the weather, right? Mm -hmm. So it really depends on uh, US weather, global weather, crop yields, things like this. So uh, knee high by the 4th of July, that's what the car, <laughs> what's what the, the saying is for corn. Uh, so it really depends on the weather. So another bad year in 25 delays this sort of upside that people might see. Uh, industrial investors never like to buy things when earnings estimates are going lower, but eventually you get to the bottom. But when that bottom is, is sort of the big risk here. Okay, good to know. And then let's talk about your one that you don't like. Um, and you sort of alluded to it. It is Caterpillar. Now the stock has done pretty well over the past year and people who don't know the company as well might think it's in farming equipment. It really isn't. It nope. mostly is digging mines and other industrial uses, right? Yep. But you say the orders are eroding. They're not doing as well. So if you take a look at the starting points of both stocks, right? Cat is up about very roughly 30% over the last 12 months. Deer is down about 20% over the last uh, 12 months. Uh, so this is a point in the cycle, like it's been tremendous. Mm. Construction spending in the US, tremendous. And right now, backlogs are starting to slip. A uh, uh, cat dealer finning, uh, it's a Canadian publicly listed company. It's a dealer, right? So you have a, this, this insight into retail orders for cat machines. Their backlog in Q3 was about 2.3 billion. Their backlog in two, Q4 was about 2 billion. So this slight erosion, this slowing of orders indicates that maybe the cycle is turning for them. Interesting. Let's also talk about the construction cycle, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. non-residential construction in particular. Um, we're seeing a peak. So it is a uh, technical term on fire. So <laughs> about $1.2 trillion in annualized non-residential commercial construction in the US right now, all time high. It's the IRA, it's reshoring of manufacturing, uh, all of those things and themes that we hear about and talk about all the time, that's having a real positive impact on construction activity in the US. 
uh, Infrastructure and Jobs Act, right? All of that stuff. And uh, that's great. It's great for CAT, and they're ha they had a wonderful year in 2023, but you always worry about when that's going to turn over and how much better it can get. Mm -hmm. So when we talked about deer, we've had a couple of down years. Deer is operating, or CAT's operating right at the peak right now. Interesting. And then finally, let's talk about valuation for this one too, and what's sort of being priced in. Right, so if, if, if I ran the universe, I would like to see CAT trade at sort of a 13 time multiple on its 24 earnings estimates. It's trading at about 15 times. So there just isn't as much uh, caution or uh, cycle uh, thought among investors right now. They're basically saying, hey, the good times are here for CAT and they'll stay. That's a little risky for me. I would prefer it to be trading more like deer and deer to be trading more like CAT, essentially. <laughs> yeah, and then let's talk about the upside risk for this one is that if interest rates do start to roll over more meaningfully, you could see an uptick in construction. Yeah, so it's, it's rates, it's China. As things recover, that's good for CAT. Uh, should be good for deer as well to some extent, but that's good for CAT. So uh, the risk is really things turn out better than feared and that the cycle is longer and that the normalization from COVID, right, it isn't that severe and we just keep building things like crazy for the next few years. Well, I guess we'll see. And just quickly, disclosure-wise, do you have a position in either of these stocks? No, Barron's doesn't trade individual stocks. Okay. I don't own anything. Okay, good to know. So let's summarize what you're telling people here. Basically, buy deer based on that attractive valuation, benefits from precision farming, and maybe a bottoming of the farming cycle. On the other side, you're saying avoid Caterpillar. It faces peaking U.S. non-residential construction and erosion of new equipment orders. Thanks so much, Albert. Really appreciate it. Both great companies, but sometimes the cycle. Yeah. All right. The latest installment. Thanks for watching the latest installment of Goodbye or Goodbye. Look out for new episodes three times a week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll be right back.